Today I am here with a fellow radio presenter. Hello, Paul. Hello, Andy. How are you um, this morning? I am. I oh, am you're all... supposed to ask the questions, aren't you? I know. See, this is the thing. I was interviewing <laughs> Gordon T at Hope FM, and he switched the interview at one point. <laughs> the rascal. Um, yes, hello. So uh, you are a, a radio presenter amongst many, many things, but that's kind of one of the things that stuck out for me when I heard about you. So let's just go straight to that. What, what's, what is it you do on radio? Okay, so... Uh, every Sunday morning, uh, I produce and broadcast a three-hour show. It's called the Sunday Sunrise Show. Uh, it starts at 7 a.m. Uh, and for the first hour, originally I was just given one hour, seven till eight. I guess it's the hour that no other DJ wants to get up at on a Sunday morning. <laughs> and, uh, and I was given that hour, and it's an hour of contemporary Christian music on a local radio station, which is a secular radio station. Uh, and then... The first week that I started to do the show on my own after some basic training, uh, the guy who was supposed to take the two hours after me didn't turn up. He wasn't well. And so I've had seven till ten ever since then, and that's for about five and a half years. Uh, the second two hours, though, I uh, play a mixture of contemporary Christian music and uh, pop music that I've chosen from, from the system. So... Uh, uh, it's um, yeah, and, and uh, I'm able to uh, talk about the Bible uh, every Sunday morning. I do a short Bible study, really short. I mean, on secular radio, the segues are very short. The music's short; it tends to be three to five minutes, doesn't it, each track? So I always aim to keep my sermon, as it were, to about three minutes. So uh, yeah, it's and um, I'm really kind of blessed by the opportunity to do this because my heart is that we talk about Jesus Christ, we talk about faith in a normal day-to-day -day setting, a secular setting, a secular world, because our society is does seem to be mostly secular. And uh, but I want to I want us to feel free to talk about our faith and about Jesus Christ in that setting. Uh, I think it uh, and, and normalize it a little bit as well. Fabulous. That's that's kind of our heart and passion. Your Sunday morning show is pure radio. It's about normalising the conversation around Jesus Christ. We are very much a Christian station. We don't hide that in any way, shape or form. But we also don't make a big thing of it either. Because for me, the fact that I love Jesus Christ is the most normal thing in the world. So um, at Pure, we don't we don't make a big point of it. So I love I love what you're doing. It's like a, a three hour condensed version of what we do 24 seven every week. And um, how did you get into radio then? Have you got a radio background? How did you end up um, doing radio? No, my background is uh, is business in the automotive uh, industry. I uh, was involved in making exhaust for cars and other vehicles. And then as, uh, as the world moved on, that became making catalytic converters and diesel filters and things like that. And uh, um, so I haven't got a background in radio at all. However, I was at a party, uh, a friend's uh, a, a friend's party and his daughter's fiance at the time was uh, a director at our local radio station in Stafford and I uh, I was just having a conversation with him and I said do you have anything that is faith-based any kind of Christian showing on a Sunday uh, on a Sunday morning and he turned around looked at me and he just said no we don't why don't you do it and my initial thought was no way not in a million years <laughs> uh, not you getting me in front of a microphone but uh, i went away and i thought about it and a couple of weeks later a friend of mine who works for a, another christian charity called international needs international needs uk uh, her name is ali and she came to stay with us and i told her about this this incident where i'd been invited to to do a show on local radio uh, a christian show and i said i'm i'm waiting i'm praying about it i'm praying I'm, I'm seeking god i'm waiting for a sign from god to say this is this is what i should do and she just turned around to me and, and looked at me and said uh, wasn't the invitation enough <laughs> so i was put in my place and well said. I, the following <laughs> day i got in touch with uh, with matt who was the director of the radio station and said uh, okay i'm ready uh, when do I start to learn about it? And it all went from there.
So Sundays, um, 7 to 10, it's a, it's a local station. So what's the name of the station where? If people want to hear, hear you on a Sunday morning, which I did a little while ago, I tuned yes. in and thought, oh, I love this. <laughs> what's the name of the station? Because you're not just local, it's actually online as well, isn't it? Yes, it is. It's it's uh, an FM station. It uh, was originally Stafford FM when I started, recently had a rebranding to Vibe One, and it's on 107.3. Uh, FM and online and on smart speakers and all the other things that we we announce when we talk about radio stations uh yeah between 7 a.m and 10 and you know what um people do take notice of the online listening figures so uh you know I think we've always been quite lucky in that respect in in that friends from further afield will listen therefore our online figures are, are quite high compared with other shows on the station um i know that a, a lot of people locally will listen on fm in the cars and in the workplace and so on but but uh but the online aspect of it has meant that we've got a wider audience which it always pleases the directors of the station you see so uh it keeps us in our, in their good books of course it does and um, mm -hmm. so radio that takes you seven to ten on a sunday you talked about the automated world uh making exhaust or mufflers if you're elsewhere in the world and um, what, <laughs> what what else are you doing today because i have a suspicion that you're a busy guy because we actually met at the <laughs> gathering christian yes. vision for men 2024 in a field near swindon a little while back but yeah. what what else do you uh do you fill your days with well, just uh, on the point of the gathering, I, I was at the free gav the, the year before this started the gathering. I think it was 2010, and uh, for, and that was at Warwick University. It used to be a, a, a men's event that actually had rooms and beds and things like that as part of it. And then uh, Carl Beach said, "You know what? I think it would be a good idea to for us all to go camping instead in a field near Swindon, as you said." And uh, so that following year. 2011 i decided to go try to encourage people from my church to come with me i was really no mates though in that event and this that would have been the first time i've been camping since i was a teenager <laughs> uh, and uh, so i marshaled as well for that event because i thought i might as well do something useful <laughs> and i guess that is what i kind of think about life and my faith that uh, you know, we've we've only got a certain span of life. You can kind of chop away the bit that you've already got to. So I'm sixty. I can forget sixty years of it. Uh, and you know, what have I got left? Well, I want to use it usefully and uh, and serve God. So that that is what is on my heart, really. And uh, I'm very motivated towards doing that. I, I had the privilege of working for Samaritan's Purse for two years as uh, operations manager in the UK. Uh, and uh, that organization ultimately is headed up by Franklin Graham, who is the son of Billy Graham. So it's very, very evangelistic. Uh, and because of that involvement, I was involved in the Operation Christmas Child, which is shoeboxes, uh, sending shoeboxes to people, to children around the world, but also with a gospel, you know, hope. They go with the hope of, of, uh, of the gospel mm. um, and they're distributed by churches in different parts of the world. Um, but it's also a disaster relief uh, organization. So when the Ukraine war started, I was sent off to Europe to buy ambulances, food, uh -huh. generators, you name it. Samaritan's Purse is a big charity. So the, the budget was, was pretty uh, amazing. And it continues to be one of the biggest organizations operating in the Ukraine, humanitarian aid organizations. That was an amazing part of my life. Uh, but um, just over a year ago, they moved their operation to a little bit too far for me to commute. Hmm. So since then, I've been uh, working with local churches, food banks, uh, and other charities to because I, I've got a bit of a heart for logistics, <laughs> so I've got a van. I'm a man with a van. Good man. Uh, I think you're a you're a sort of a logistics guy as well, aren't you, Andy? Ex trucker, twenty years. Yeah, there you go. You see, uh, and and I I just believe that there are there's plenty of need out there for whether it's food or non food items by charities. There's charities that will distribute those things. And there are organizations that have got the things to give away, uh, you know, gifts in time, got GIK. Um, lots of organizations, there's supermarket chains, there's, there's uh, all sorts of organizations that have things to give away. 
And if you can link one with the other, you know, you know, uh, you know, if you can get this stuff to the charities, then they they can distribute. And of course, most food banks in the UK are operated by churches, so it is actually, you know, a, an expression of people's faith as well to do that sort of thing. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, <laughs> what else do I do? Well, I also work for another glo- uh, um, humanitarian aid charity, and I help them with their logistics planning and their uh um systems in their warehouse and that chat is called global aid network i'm a volunteer with them and they they send aid around the world it's mostly clothing but it can be anything really uh they operate out of a warehouse in birmingham uh they also supply a lot of the refugee charities in the uk okay. with clothes and training shoes and things like that uh, again a lot of charities refugee charities are run by churches so it's just a great way to connect with with the wider faith community and uh, a, a privilege to do that so uh, yeah global aid network they they're called gain uh, and they're actually part of Agape, which is another Agape mission. Agape UK, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's more or less it. I'm also a, a police chaplain. Um, okay. And a dad. <laughs> and a granddad. So, oh, uh, and a husband. So, yeah, there's quite quite a lot. Uh, there's quite a lot there, isn't there? It's busy, yeah. <laughs> so you're talking about faith. What's your faith journey then? It's, it's a question I love to ask people because for some, um, like myself, it's a very slow, gentle journey. Uh, you go to church, you kind of think, oh, this God thing's quite good. And you actually go to church and you think, yeah, I'm, I'm going to have this sort of a life. And for others, like my wife, it's a very um, more dramatic than Paul on the road to Damascus kind of experience. I mean, we're, we're <laughs> poles apart in terms of our how we came to faith. So what's your faith journey? Uh, well, me and my wife are the sort of reverse of, of you and your wife, Andy. Okay. Uh, Ma- uh, Mandy grew up in a Christian family, uh, and she, she, what can I say? I, I think there was probably some has resistance uh, when when she married me because uh, I wasn't a Christian. Uh, I grew up in a, a, a family that didn't go to church, al- although I went to a christian school and i i remember as a child kind of feeling quite connected with what what they they did there but i was a long way from faith i didn't really believe in anything um i just my objective was just to live life enjoy it i was ambitious in business uh i had uh, my own business in that automotive industry uh and um I thought it was all about, you know, you work hard, you earn a lot, you spend it on having fun. When um, I got married, Mandy, uh, I think, strategically started uh, us going as a family to a, a, a church that, because her background was Pentecostal, she she strategically put us in a church that was quite acceptable, I would say. Let's put it that way. And uh, I used to go along, not take any notice of it, look after our our, uh, one little girl at the time. Um, But then after our second daughter was born, I decided to walk to church on a Sunday morning to talk to the vicar about a christening. That didn't happen. What happened is on the way to church on a beautiful day, I became more and more kind of burdened by what was missing in my life. you know felt really empty and I, I thought this is absolutely mad I, you know i've got a lovely family look you know a new baby nice cars i was very much into cars you know all the material things a nice house and a good job and uh, but i feel empty something's you know something's not uh, fulfilling me um, and and as i walked to church that feeling got worse and worse and worse And in the service, on my own in the service, for the first time taking notice of what the vicar was saying, what the words of the songs were, I felt I was being pressed down, you know, like crushed uh, in in my spirit, I guess, in my emotions. And, And at one point in the service, there was a word of knowledge, which this church did. I didn't know even know what those things were. And someone had said, uh, uh, you know, heard in prayer that there was uh, someone with a particular medical need. And that related exactly to a medical need I had. Wow. So at the end of the service, I went forward, spoke to the vicar because they had a pray. They prayed for the sick at the end of the service at this Anglican church. 
And he said, well, let me call my wife over. We'll pray with you together. And when she came over, she said, you know, when God gives these words of knowledge, sometimes he's got a second agenda. Now, I think it was just using that kind of business language of the word agenda. It's as simple as that kind of was the final straw that broke the cam camel's back in my case. And I said, you know, I know that you're right. I think I need to be born again. And, <laughs> you know, I didn't really even know what born again meant, but they <laughs> prayed with me the sinner's prayer. Uh, I, you know, confessed Jesus. I confessed that I was a sinner and I needed, I needed saving. And I confessed that Jesus Christ was my Lord. And it was like that weight that had felt, it just went boom, just lifted off, wow. off me. And I was like, I was walking on air. And after the service, I started to walk home and my wife uh, had, uh, her father had come around to, to look after the, ch uh, the children, the new baby and so on. And, and she drove to the church to pick me up. And she, she said, when I got in the car, what's happened to you? You know, she said, I could see from quite a lo long way off that you were different. You looked different. And and that's my story. That was that was uh, 31 years ago, Andy. Awesome. And uh, it's been, well, God's been faithful. It's been a pretty tough life. You know, it, it didn't make this life an easy life by any means. But we've always known that God's been with us throughout the ups and the downs so that's my faith journey andy well I, it's, it's beautiful i was getting goosebumps listening because it's it was that thing you said about how you're walking along the road in so many ways life was good and yeah. yet there was this gap i guess it's yeah. that god-shaped hole the song from plum there's a god-shaped hole in each one of us and and you i suppose at that point we were recognizing there's something missing in amongst all the good stuff there's this thing that's not right i actually remember a friend of mine once asking can you pray for my husband i really wanted to find jesus but in his life he's got good health got a good job good car good money everything's great and it's like he doesn't know that he needs jesus right now he sort of does but then another new car comes along or promotion or it's like mm. he needs all yeah. this stuff can you pray for him i don't know what happened with that because we lost touch with him but she just knew that because life was good, he was going along happily, but not, which is, I guess, where you were. Yes, absolutely. And um, I mean, I feel that, uh, that uh, you know, I was very privileged to, to hear, hear God's voice in that, in that moment. Uh, in some cases, it is the tough things that bring people to realizing that they need God in their lives. Yes. And, uh, you know, they don't recognize their own emptiness. I think probably, the, the you know, a lot of people are concerned about the way the world's going, how secular and it actually really quite horrible it, it seems to be going. But, you know, I think God knows the end from the beginning and I think he's got a, a plan. And there are a lot of people around like you, Andy, and, and, and like what we're doing on Vibe One who are planting seeds. Uh, you know, people must have planted seeds with me. So when i realized i mean i'd heard of people having conversion experiences but i didn't really believe them i don't suppose or you know and i didn't think it would happen to me but uh, you know those are all seeds aren't they uh, and uh, i think the, there are a lot of people planting seeds and society is getting ready for for god to to do something you know people will say this is crazy it's gone gone mad uh, you know, there must be something something more to life than this, and that is exactly what I was saying to myself before before I uh, I you know made that decision to follow Jesus. Wow. I'm really glad you listened. Uh, it's 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 a defining moment, isn't it? Um, you, you mentioned some hard stuff that, that that life isn't easy. Where has God been through that? Then have you got some some examples where you've been through a hard time, but actually God has been with you through that? Where it's it's because you know you become a Christian. And some of us, oh, yeah, you become a Christian. It's great. Everything's rosy and wonderful. And, well, that's not my story. And it's not the story of anybody I know who's come to faith. So uh, what, what's something that God's carried you through? How has he helped you? I think there's there are so many things that uh, you're quite right. And, 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 you know, people think if you're a Christian, it must be a bed of roses, you know, an easy life or something like that. And and maybe someone, you know, it it would be wrong to to suggest that to anyone that by 
by becoming a Christian, everything's going to be okay. The difference is, I think, that you carried through incredibly difficult times at times by by Jesus. You know, the the story, we're, we're on holiday and, uh, you know, there's the story of the footsteps on the beach when there's two and Jesus is walking beside somebody and then there's only one and, and the question is, you know, where were you, Jesus, in your toughest times? And, uh, and he says, he, I was carrying you. And it certainly carried me and, me and Mandy through, you know, uh, in 2015, we lost our daughter, Hannah. She was, 20, she was 22 years old. And um, so sorry. after a very tough experience at, at university, uh involving you know some uh, she experienced some physical and sexual abuse uh, her mental health declined uh and um that led to her taking her own life there's there is you think absolutely nothing that can get you through that and and day, day to day it's it's tough you know so many times almost every day i i, I say lord i need you to help me get through this uh, but he does is you know i'm here it's never failed to come through for us and we often say and i think christians in general often say when they go through something really tough i don't know how people who haven't got a faith can possibly get through this you know we say that and and i really believe it and you know i would encourage anyone listening to this who is is seeking you know really really look hard really really try to find that faith because you know it's jesus is knocking on on the door of your heart and it's probably knocking on someone's door right now wow yeah. i'm so sorry for your loss um so tragic but i'm really glad that god <sighs> carries you carries you through that i mean you know you, you hear that and it, it almost feels kind of so separated from you well it happened to somebody else and you, and you hear that but yeah but there's a real difficulty in that because it isn't simply as something happened and someone struggled you know the, it, the, the ramifications it's that stone in the lake isn't it the ripples just go on and on and on the number of people that's going to affect and every yes. day how are we going to get through this how are we going to sort this and um it's amazing how god brought you you through that um the, the the obvious question i kind of have to ask is how how would you help somebody who is facing their own sexual abuse or um bullying in the workplace you know how, how would you speak to somebody who's in that place of feeling utterly trapped who do i talk to about this how can you help them to see a way through the mire yeah it's very difficult i i mean i i know more about it now than before we lost hannah um i would say if you are um if you know someone is going through that sort of situation don't think that it can't, couldn't happen don't think that they wouldn't take um that further step and harm themselves always um always do everything you can to support them i, I know um we thought we were but you know we I, I guess personally i didn't ever believe that hannah would do that um but you see when someone is in that level of poor mental health they're not themselves you know this is an illness that that takes lives and for someone who is feeling that they get into that stage where they're having, you know, dangerous thoughts about themselves, uh, they have to seek help. They are they are so valuable to people that they're they're lost. The loss of them, you know, they might not feel loved. They might not feel significant or valued. But believe me, it they really are and they're valued by god as well you know there's no doubt about that but but i would say there are agencies there's the samaritans uh, and so on but probably your first port of call is your local crisis team the uh, you know um a and e 999 if you know that you're 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 feeling you're having those ideas it's 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 uh you know get emergency help straight away and the 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 medical services will take it seriously yeah. because it's it's almost an epidemic uh it, you know and we're losing too many lovely young people very often young people yeah. it is we're losing too many men 
um you know and and sort of men between the ages of uh, uh, you know maybe it's 20 24 and 50 or something like that i don't know the exact figures uh, are the highest demographic for for um, taking their own lives and there is help out there and this, i i heard a very interesting statistic and it was uh, a study done of people jumping off the golden gate um, bridge in in america and I've forgotten how many jump off that bridge every year, but every year about 20 survive. And they might have terrible injuries, but they survive and, and they, they recover. And out of uh, the 20 that survive, when they interview them about the actual moment that they jump, they say that... Uh, 19 out of the 20 say immediately they regret it as soon as they let go of the rail they regret it so what i would say is that your mind is tricking you to thinking this is an okay thing to do it really isn't it really isn't and you know those people have gone on to have uh, lives that are okay with the there was um a, quite a famous survivor i can't remember his name who speaks about this who t t tried to take his own life in london a few years ago and uh, and someone came to him he was on a bridge and someone came to him and, and talked him down and they've become great friends and this guy goes around now lecturing about it because you know you've got to do something to break that moment that you feel at your lowest and you know that might be ringing 999 having the 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 mental strength to just do that because you know it's really important that we save these people i think andy i know it's a pretty tough thing to talk about on the radio <laughs> but uh it's a very tough thing to talk about but you know god this is this is it isn't of god taking your own life you know god loves people he loves he loves people regardless uh, of what they've done in their lives of, of whatever sin they've committed of whatever guilt they feel god loves people and uh, and i think it's really important that people just step back and and review and 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 take a look at what they're doing and and stop it's one of the things i've said frequently i've actually seen that um i remember watching that same documentary about the golden gate bridge and one of the things i say frequently on air is every one of us is made both on purpose and with purpose none of us is an accident there's nothing random about that um god actually loves us and he has a plan and you know i'm, I'm thinking at the moment because pure was coming up to a year i'm, I'm really passionate about encouraging people to see the god-given desire that he's placed in their hearts the thing that only he wants them to do yeah. Yeah, that they're, they're so uniquely and perfectly placed to do but my passion is to get people out of the boat because it's so mm -hmm. scary sometimes to to tread into a place that we're scared by but but our feelings lie i mean you you said that about people who you know the survivors from golden gate bridge our feelings lie to us all the time you know yeah. not not belittling this but we feel hunger when we're not because our body gets confused and our stomach says one thing and our brain says another our eyes say another our mouth says something different our nose and and we get very confused and that's just a really really massively simple issue like you know eating a piece of cake we don't need and when you start to magnify that into relationships and you start putting in emotional or spiritual or sexual abuse it just gets much more bigger uh much bigger and, and condenses and you know so yeah it's it's having having the i suppose the having the confidence to just say you know i'm, I'm not doing very well i used to have this thing in church people say how you doing andy because i was always at the front doing worship leading how you doing and generally i'll be saying yeah i'm all right most, most of the time i was and i thought i'm gonna run an experiment one day when i was feeling really rubbish i don't even remember why now and so i was how are you doing andy and i said you know what i'm really broken hearted i'm really sad i'm devastated said, oh fantastic off you go then and I then started to say to church when I was doing worship, you know, if, if you're going to ask someone how they are, make sure that you are ready for an answer that you don't necessarily want. Don't say how you're doing unless you're mm. ready for somebody to say, do you know, I'm feeling suicidal today. Now, that's not what happened to me, but um, it was just a, a situation that was really hard. And what I found is people don't necessarily listen when they say, how are you? But it's yeah. that thing about what math to you is, you know, we need to listen twice as hard as we speak. And if, if someone's speaking to us, we've got to pay attention because that's their story. And uh, don't ever 
you know, wash somebody away just because it isn't the nice Sunday morning. Yes, I'm doing great answer because you know what? You could be the last person in that yes. line to sow a positive seed, which could redefine their life for good. Um, so yeah, I, I'm, I, I agree with you on all of that stuff. <laughs> let's talk to people. Uh, let's just come back to um, radio just for a moment. Um, yeah. So you, you enjoyed doing the radio. One of the things that I'm really conscious of, and I've said this multiple times, I think over the years, I'm so glad that contemporary Christian music today is not what it was in the 80s and the 90s. Um, in the 90s, it started to get better. And yet today, you've got people like Corey Asprey, you've got Josh Baldwin, Chris Tom, Matthew West, yeah. and Lecrae, LZ7. You've got uh, some amazing, just such a different diversity of music. Yeah. Uh, you know, Sarah Reeves, you know, we've got Lauren Daigle. There's some really great talent. Um, wh where do you go to when you're trying to choose music for your show on a Sunday morning? How do you select the music what's your process <laughs> well all those uh <laughs> all those names that you just mentioned toby mack i'd throw in there as yep. well i love uh, some christian hip-hop uh, a few uh, more local people like uh we have a local artist in stafford who um uh, it does some christian edm uh named awesome. business uh philippa hanna love her yep. Uh, music seen a loads of time at, at the big church festival as it's yeah. now called and and she's played in stafford one or two times uh, i like the classics as well um I like some some of uh graham kendrick's songs and he, he keeps producing new ones so you know it's but i mean we have a, a kind of a pattern where we would identify certain songs as being our openers and uh, and they they would be fairly up tempo and the, for the first uh, you know probably 15 20 minutes i will play some quite well known worship songs at 7 a.m because i know that that particular time uh, there are listeners from the, from local churches who are listening because they are interested they want to know if i've announced their their <laughs> tea party or something like that I, I guess but they they you know they listen while they're getting ready for church so i'll play some worship songs in that first hour in the the second uh, two hours i will go more hip-hop pop contemporary a little bit of rock uh kind of sound in in the uh in 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 the music choice mixing it in with kind of my favorite non-christian tracks you know uh, i became a christian when i was 29 i'd already formed quite a a good um, varied mus musical taste before i became a christian uh, which is useful i think really because there's some great secular artists out there and songs oh yeah yeah you know, so uh, yeah and i think it's probably it's a shame not to play some of the great music that's out there I think certainly when you look at music from the 70s and 80s, the secular music was way ahead of the contemporary Christian music of those eras, as you as very you much mentioned. <laughs> but it's so, not the same today, I would no, have said. You no, know, yeah. some great Christian bands. You know, going to things like the Big Church Festival and other things like that is a great way of connecting with the music out there. Um, a friend of mine, Pete, Pete Fried, who his day job is he works for Mission Aviation Fellowship, so he works for a Christian um, missionary organization, is ex RAF, so uh, uh, he knows a lot about aeroplanes, more jet seller than I think the, the ones that math fly. Um, so he is uh, he co hosts the show with me as well, and um, and we kind of fill in for each other when we're not around on holiday and so on. And he has a daughter who's of an age where she's listening to all the up and coming Christian bands. Great source of uh, of uh, music uh, information that is. So I have three sons do the same thing. It's brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, uh, in fairness to the directors of, of Vibe FM, they allow us quite a big uh, uh, amount of space on the server to put our songs. So we've, we've, we've built up quite a good um, selections of songs on the on the server. And, and you know, I mean, my heart is that if for some reason I wasn't around to do the show, it would be something that we could train someone up quite easily and hand it over to. Uh, or if we could kind of uh, expand it to other local stations, I'd, I'd be quite keen to do that. Because at the end of the day, I want people to 
people who don't go to church my my interest is the people who don't go to church more than the people who do sorry about that but 93 percent 97 percent of the uk population don't go to church regularly well that's a pretty good section to aim for i think with uh, introducing them to christian music and the gospel of course i love that whole one <laughs> it's not oh gosh there's a, there's a lot of people who want who don't know jesus it's look at all the people who we can talk to who don't know jesus yet i love that yeah that absolutely. attitude that's really cool and um, paul thank you so much for your time uh it's been a pleasure and a joy to talk to you we met each other at the gathering 2024 christian vision for men uh and that was great my son says, oh yes i remember him he was great um so yeah you're memorable which is great and i love what you're doing with vibe one uh with with the contemporary christian music and all the stuff you're doing there which is fabulous so i hope that continues to grow grown grown so strength much. um it'd be great yeah to get you one of the stations doing what you're doing because it's it's really good on a sunday morning to have something just a little bit different. Um, Paul, thank you so much for your time. It's been a pleasure and a joy. Take thank care. You. Bye for now. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye. Did you know Pure 24-7 Radio has a shop? Well, we do. You can buy merchandise while supporting the work that we do here. Simply head over to www.pure247radio.org forward slash shop. That's www.pure247radio.org forward slash shop.